Kitco News special coverage of the Bank of Montreal's 32nd Global Metals, Mining and Critical Minerals Conference is brought to you by First Majestic Silver. I'm Michelle McCory. This is Kitco News, and we are back at the Bank of Montreal's Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals Conference here in Hollywood, Florida. And joining me now is E.B. Tucker. E.B. is, of course, the director at Metalla Royalty, author of Why Gold, Why Now, and the editor of The Tucklet. Very nice to have you with us, E.B. Thanks for having me. And you've just launched this new newsletter on Substack? People have been asking for a while now, where can we find you? How can we be connected with you? I used to write newsletters. I retired a few years ago, written a book, of course. But now ebtucker.com is the way they can find me. And it's it's direct. There's no, there's no publisher. It's just me. And I encourage people to check it out now. It's free now. And, free now, uh, but yeah. people will get hooked and will be paying. I, right. I, read, and, I read the first couple of the newsletters that you had you out think? there. Well, we're going to discuss them. Right. We're going to discuss Good. them in the Good. course of this interview. But we're here at a metals, mining, critical, minerals conference, all very tangible resources with intrinsic value. But right. I actually want to start off this conversation with something that's intangible, and that is FedCoin, central bank digital currency. And FedCoin is something that you addressed in your book that you published in 2020. Three years ago. Yeah, Why Gold? Is, Yeah, it's wild. Three years ago. It's hard to remember that that's when we had masks on and we were staying home and we thought the world was going to end. It didn't end, yeah. but a lot of things have changed. And chapter 17 of the book is FedCoin. And I believe that the US dollar will transition into a blockchain currency and it will not be one that you can speculate on and make money on. There's 13,000 coins. My favorite is Pancake Coin, of course, as everyone knows. And I think that people will realize that these coins are going to lose a lot of value. And eventually you'll transact with FedCoin. The Fed will control this. It'll be a closed loop blockchain. Yeah. This is a prediction, of course, but I don't think it's good for free, freedom-seeking people. Well, I don't know that we can even say that it's such a prediction. I mean, 114 countries are actively exploring a central bank digital currency, yeah. which again is fiat that is digital, right. that is programmable, potentially, right. allowing the right. government to change how you're able to use it depending on the circumstance, and is on the blockchain. And in fact, just today, the Bank of England issued a statement. Uh, the deputy governor there, John Cunliffe, says that the UK isn't ready yet to issue a digital pound as a central bank has yet to gain enough expertise. But he says there is more than a 50% chance that the Bank of England would issue a digital pound, saying that the technical skills necessary to do so aren't there just yet. So, right. All right. All so right. CBDCs so, are happening. Yeah. Help us understand why this is potentially such a problem. As we know, the government is able to monitor every single transaction that Correct. you would make through a CBDC, That's right. but could also potentially program these currencies. Yeah. And we have seen the case of government overreach, as you alluded to three years ago, when we were all forced to wear yeah. masks and depending on where you live, yeah. abide by curfews, many restrictions, so forth and so on. So in your book, you actually write um, that the ultimate goal for crypto technology is central bank digital currencies. Correct. And so a couple things, though. Whenever you watch the news, remember that it's a carefully orchestrated PR campaign designed to play with your emotions, always. So the news is not a source of getting news? facts. I mean, not Kitco news, of course, okay. but, but, but when you um, see something that is repeated in, in the media, you can guarantee that this is by design. So my point is, is that when I write something like this very early, it's not because I read it in the Wall Street Journal and then wrote something to you about it. It's a, it's a, it's a prediction you have to be ahead of the news, which takes time. So when I read 50% all these things, I know this is kind of nonsense. They probably already have this ready to go. And it's a matter of waiting for the right crisis in order to put it in place. Now, to simplify this, I, a lot of people don't know this, but I went to reform school when I was a teenager. I was a wayward teen. We played a game called Liar's Poker. And Liar's Poker, the serial number on dollars is all these numbers. And you would play a betting game of what numbers are on each dollar. It was very fun. And what people don't realize is that the Fed coin is going to allow the United States and the Fed to have a serial number just like on those dollars that we played Liar's Poker with on every single dollar so that when you transact and you go and have drinks or have a cigar or something that might they might want to tax or your carbon footprint is high eating lots of meat or something they're able to then quantify that transaction so it does a few things for government number one it prevents any counterfeiting 
So you, you will not be able to counterfeit this. That solves one big problem. Number two, prevents tax evasion. And that's a number, another problem for the government. They collect about 18 to 20% of GDP in taxes, and now they'll collect as much as they want. They'll never miss $1, which excites the government. And um, number three is they'll know where every dollar is at all times. Now, throughout the world, you've traveled internationally a lot. You know that most paper money in the US is overseas. It's in Eastern Europe and Africa and South America. It's all over the place and people hoard it because they feel safe with those blue $100 bills. But that will be a thing of the past. We'll know every single little village in Cambodia where someone has a $20 bill, we'll know exactly where that $20 bill is. So if you are a control power person that wants to have total control over the world's largest economy, this is the best possible thing that you could ever imagine. And it solves so many problems because you don't want people to have much freedom. And I think people need to see that as the big picture. And then when they look at the small details, like to your point, almost every country is preparing this technology. You can guarantee that it's already done. You and I could start, uh, we could start Kitco coin and we could make this coin right away. So you can guarantee that the Fed can go to MIT and say, we want a closed loop blockchain with the Watson computer running it and all these things, put it on people's apps. Next time we have a crisis, it'll be a cybersecurity crisis where all your sites will go down, your phone will go down. And this is how they'll introduce this, it, I think. We'll see over time, you know, if this changes, but to me, it looks very obvious right now. A lot to unpack there. Uh, there's a lot, I, apologies for too much here, but, but it is an important, it might be the most important question of our time. I yeah. do not disagree with that at all. And it is a very problematic uh, prospect, especially considering, as I said, how we saw government overreach. Yeah during COVID. Well, well let's, let's in, give in, people something basic. Okay, because everybody's always saying, they, they message me that about, they like when I say things about my life. The, I tell my friends, this might be the best time of our life right now. And they get all gloomy about this. I say, no, you have to understand, instead of being worried about these types of things becoming part of your life, it's very important to enjoy time now and you can do things with your wealth and you can do things with your family and you have this degree of freedom and you you really maximize that in this moment instead of being worried about this ultimate digital okay but but we should also yeah. prepare right so carpe diem enjoy the moment live while you can yeah. but we should also prepare and again as i was saying we saw tremendous government overreach with covid for example you know canada uh, and the Freedom Convoy, the truckers who were protesting the vaccine, right. they were taken off the financial system right. with an emergency law by Trudeau. So much easier to do when you have a programmable digital currency. Um, and again, we, we don't know how governments are going to use this exactly, but you know, I describe the scenario where this idea of the digital ID is merged with your central bank digital currency and you bring in the climate change narrative. That's right. The ESG angle, and it'll be, oh, Michelle, you've taken 15 flights this year. You've exceeded your carbon footprint for the month. Your currency doesn't work to transact to buy another plane ticket, or it does, but with a premium because it's monitoring my carbon footprint. Or because uh, EB, EB uh, showed you how the carbon offset market works, you know, through carbon neutral and you were able that, to, that, yeah, that's another possibility. Yeah. That's but, a whole other but, conversation. But, but this is coming, if you go to the airport, you see they have a real ID now, you see all the steps being yeah. taken, you won't be able to do anything without doing this. It's definitely coming. So you think that this is going to be introduced through a cyber security crisis? End of the decade. Yeah. Elaborate on that. What's the I, scenario? I feel like, I feel like we're in a, a scenario now where every crisis is an opportunity to usher in a new level of regulation and oversight that previously didn't exist before, which, is, which has been happening since 2000, really. If you look, each time something happens and it never goes away. Like the, the TSA is uh, 80,000 strong or something. And it, you know, never, everything is justified and Dodd-Frank and you can't get a mortgage without paying all these people to do things. And each time you layer something on, it never goes back. And so this will be the next, the next layer that justifies. Uh, but, but explain, you say by the end of the decade that a cyber a security, it, okay, we won't guess, hold you but, to that but, timeline, but, but how think, does a cyber security lay the groundwork? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll tell you. One of the things I like to do is not carry a phone with me. And 
I'll, the reason I like to do it is I look around and every single person, they can't go 30 seconds without looking at their phone. And, he, and it's, I encourage people to try to see if you can leave your phone away for an hour and people begin to have a panic attack. And so if you look, people are very addicted to looking at the phone all the time. Even 20, 30 seconds goes by, maybe you missed a text from Amazon or something and you gotta look at your phone. And so everyone has become, this is a part of their life, they can't do anything, they can't drive without it, they can't bank without it, they can't, they can't use their Fed coin eventually without it. Okay, can't do anything. And so if this went down, if there was a, if there was a loss of connectivity with the phone, I think the society would go into a collective panic very similar to what happened with, with COVID or very similar to the collective. If you notice, we're all linked together with this hive mind because everyone is staring at me social media all the time and they're very affected by this and they're not in touch with actual tangible reality. And so it's very easy to, to push them as a herd. And so if that entire thing went down, you would see mass panic and then people would do essentially whatever they're told to get the technology turned back on. And so it would be logical that if that were to happen, that you would say there was some nefarious group or something. The way you would, you would bring this through would be to usher in the FedCoin download as a safe way to access your, your money. This is a, I know this is a wild theory, but it is sometimes good to, to think about possibilities sure, and then to sure. not be hung up on them, but just make a note and you can have me back someday and you, if uh, I listen, got it I wrong, hope you're wrong. If I, got I it hope wrong, you're wrong. You know, but I'm willing to admit, you know, but, but I, I but think so it's so logical. So you're saying there'll be a cybersecurity crisis. Everybody gets taken off the grid, if you will, blackout. in terms yep. of a blackout. Yep. Yep. And what sites are safe? Is .com safe? .gov is safe? Maybe it's .safe is safe. And then you usher in this panic that people say to themselves, is my bank is my home safe? Is my mortgage, my security system? I mean, everything is on this phone now and yeah. I can't access it. I'm lost. And then the government does what? They, says they provide safety for you. So they, they provide a portal for you to, to then feel safe again. And all you have to do is give up a few freedoms, of course, which they'll say is worth it considering the circumstances. So you're saying that they would not wipe out your current digital so. assets, but they no. would say we're transferring them. They're in danger. Yeah. but into yeah. a CBDC format. So yeah. say I've got $250,000 in the bank and I'm using that intentionally because it's, it's probably under FDIC, yeah. Yeah. but it would, Convert. they would say, um, you know, for your own safety, we're going to make this into a CBDC that now off to, this, off to this mass blackout and everybody's panicked yeah. and I'd rather have it in CBDC form than not have it at all. Because you is might what lose it saying. to yeah. this nefarious hacker group from North Korea that no one has seen before that could come and get it in the middle of the night. And I think people would believe this. It's a very, it's a very plausible story for the average American. You have to remember uh, all the time I'm asking, I'm in conversation with people when I'm going around and I'm, li and I'm thinking this is a story they would believe. I think they would believe it. Well, what happens to the media, for example, that you say are in charge of putting out this message? They're not in charge. I think I think they're a platform. I think they're, they're a very good platform for distributing information. Are they, do they survive this temporary blackout? Sure, I think if they, if they don't go against it, they do. I mean, if you saw when we were going through COVID, the, especially the biggest cheerleaders, you know, were, were held in high regard in the media. I think if you would have written uh, questioning stories, I think you would have, come into a lot of heat as a media source. How but long, but I, long, I think that's, that's been the case for, for 100 years. I mean, if I remember in my book, I was writing about uh, my, my great grandmother had all these coins and she gave the coins to the bank when Roosevelt asked for them. And I always told my grandfather, who was my mentor, I said, I can't believe she did that. You know, that, it was obvious that the price that they were paying for these coins was, was set to go up a lot. And my grandfather explained to me that at the time, Every single newspaper front page headline was all about how traders were going to put the, the country in jeopardy. And, and he was saying to me that you have to sympathize with someone that is a housewife that's worried that maybe her family is going to be sent to, to this you know, brewing yeah. war and all these yeah. depression, all these things are going on. And, and so the, the, the point is, is everybody is worried about now, but you have to remember that this type of thing is it's very natural and it's been going on for a long time, and it's nothing to worry about, because if you were to swat it down, there's another, it's just constantly evolving. But I think when people see from the past how things sure. evolve, they're much less emotional, and then they can make decisions they're happy with instead of panicking. And right. it was like that in COVID. You, you say, let's be rational about us. Where do we want to physically live? 
you know, what do we want to do with our, how, how do we want to choose during this was a better way to think than responding to every news story. Okay, I want to just, again, go back to your blackout theory. And I okay. guess it's only a black, it's only a theory. It's a theory. How, how long would this blackout well, last? Well, we don't want do to give the government any ideas here today, Michelle. But but I, 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 I personally, when I'm in the airport, when I'm in the subway in New York, when I'm serving, I'm always astonished by people's addiction to their phone. And the uh, phone is a useful tool, but I, they, they, it almost appears they can't live without it. And so I, I feel like an, ind an indefinite fear that that is lost as a form of connectivity would really shock the average American to the core. And so, of course, as a freedom-loving uh, Zen practitioner, I would never want anyone to experience this. But... I'm left kind of sitting and thinking something is cooking here because because the society is is vulnerable in this case. And 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 also like just you mentioned the Tucker letter. Some of these things we start talking about in the in the letter because we're not just talking about money. I mean it's actually not that hard to make money in life. I mean I show people that in the letter. Money comes and goes. You have trends that come in. You can you can play these things, but it's the life piece of it. And so when you when you dig into these things that are going on, what you, your conclusion, if you're a thinking person, is maybe I'm going to spend some time reconnecting with my family or the people that I'm close with, or, or being outdoors. All these things as part of my way to take care of myself. Now that I'm starting to see kind of how these trends are unfolding. All right, so. Again, the details of how they implement a CBDC are still, to be, are still to need be, to be worked they're, out. They're, they're going to be revealed to us in yeah. some exciting I mean, and, and there are other you know, theories of how this could be implemented. For example, if you look at how artificial intelligence is uh, gaining traction and yeah. potentially creating well, uh, an unemployment issue. messages are well, real. Well, sure, but you, know, you could create uh, a major unemployment crisis and then people yep. need to get universal basic income and yep. that is given to them via a digital wallet yep. in the form of a CBDC. There yep. are very way, various creative ways that yep. the government could implement yep. a CBDC. Well, people know the way you protect yourself now is you, you learn and you, and you think and you connect you know, with things right. that matter and you take care of yourself. And, and you realize that a lot of times you're able to navigate if you've done those things instead of scrolling Instagram for three hours a day or something. I mean, which is not bad. I don't have a thing against Instagram. I'm just saying that it's important to have a balanced life that includes learning. And most people have let that go. All right. In, in your book, though, you make an interesting suggestion, though. Oh. Um, <laughs> you, you insinuate that perhaps uh, Bitcoin... Oh. was the Trojan horse for central bank digital yeah. currencies yeah. and paved the way for society to accept yeah. digital currencies. I know it seems out there, but I remember when a friend of mine said uh, we should buy a thousand of these Bitcoin tokens online for $10 each. I mean, this was probably 2009 or 10 or something like this. I mean, it was not long after the, the coins had come out and he was explaining how we could mine them and all this stuff. And my response was, you know, what do you think? I'm some kind of idiot. You know, I mean, who, who does that? Because this is how new this was. I mean, if you remember, I remember back to the beginning and the guy bought the pizza in Jacksonville, Florida with, with two. First Bitcoin yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And so I remember all the way back. But if you were to tell your friends, your family, your aunt, your uncle, all these people about that, they would say, you've lost your mind. But now if you'd ask them, they say, oh, I'm trying to learn about Bitcoin too, because I'm so interested. And I heard about these people that made money and all this different stuff. And so it's become widely accepted. Uh, so that's, that's the biggest piece of it. Uh, in the book, I kind of lay out some of the facts that I think people don't know about how the network originally started. There was a there was a series of, of posts made which had a very unique, I'm not gonna reveal this to read the book, but but it had a very unique timestamp which indicated that there was a certain uh, t you know, at least like country or time zone well, involved. You, yeah, you look, um, the fact that Bitcoin is widely accepted now yeah. and that it created widespread adoption That's of right. digital currencies. It's cool, it's um, cool now. Doesn't make the case that it was implemented by the government. And, and in your book, you say, 
And again, the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto is unknown, unknown and yeah. a lot of mystery well, there. But, the, the but just, but just yeah. the fact that I, I know you point out that, you know, he was active between, was not active rather, between 6 a.m. and 12 a.m. Eastern Standard. Yeah. That doesn't mean that, yeah. that that doesn't mean anything. There's nothing to really point no, to the correct, fact that correct. it's a government initiative. On, on the contrary, Bitcoin maxis would say that the government has yeah. taken this technology, right. manipulated it for nefarious purposes, yeah. and that the and that Bitcoin yeah. is the way to regain control well, over I, your I, financial I, I, situation. I have, a, I have a friend who is from the reform school I went to that's a somewhat notorious in the dark web community, okay, and, and he does uh, virtuous work these days, okay. He, I had dinner with him in, in Los Angeles at, a, at an amazing omakase place, and he doesn't use any uh, high performance encryption for his crypto. And I asked him, I said, out of curiosity, why? And he goes, he's eating the sushi and he looks over at me and he goes, there's no reason to hide what they already know about. And he began to tell me about things that I had kind of lost in the news, like the, the guy that uh, hacked all the Twitter accounts from, he was in Orlando and he got paid in Bitcoin and washed the Bitcoin and they showed up at his house. And there's all these stories out there of, it's very traceable. It's very, very traceable. This is not a private vault on your cell phone. That's the impression that people have and it's not the case. And so I think people slowly over time are realizing that you could have it somewhere hidden, okay? Like have it in cold storage, somewhere. okay. But when you wanna use it, it's very difficult to use it without being able to be traced. Okay, yeah. but that again, doesn't make the case that this is a government initiative. It's decentralized system of peer-to-peer uh, financial exchange uh, lending on an, an open ledger. It, it look, it's it's an interesting theory. Yeah, you yeah. put out some question Although marks. Although Ethereum is is no longer that. Ethereum is now majority. No, I'm saying it's an interesting con theory. Yeah, control. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, a yeah lot but we're not ta but we're not talking yeah. about Ethereum. We're yeah. talking about Bitcoin being it, a true. That's right. Horse. But as things have started to evolve, you start noticing that you know the recent shift in Ethereum last summer lost that open that sure, thing and, that we all again. think is so amazing is now gone. And I think people were upset about that. Like you read some of the maxis say, this is like against the whole code of the, yeah. So as we progress over time, I don't, I don't think there are going to be many ways that you're going to be able to kind of operate outside of the system without going through a lot of, of trouble. And, and, I, and I say that um, with a bit of regret, you know, in, in my heart, because obviously, we're all unique people, and I think we deserve the right to be free. And, and I think that's going to increasingly be... Right. Again, the Bitcoin maxis strongly differentiate yeah. between Bitcoin and Ethereum course, and other coins. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's an interesting insinuation that you have that perhaps this is a seed planted by the government. You could be right. I don't know that the government is that smart and sophisticated yeah. and planning ahead, but, you know... Uh, I, I, I genuinely hope that I'm wrong. But just but, so you know, but either way, yeah. either way, again, it's 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 kind of like yeah. it makes you think hmm, yeah. an interesting idea there. And but either way, whether it was intentionally set up to usher the way to CBDCs yeah. or again, the technology was adopted by government and will end up having a more nefarious yeah. purpose yeah. brings us back to the fact that we have CBDCs. And, you know, we talked about government and recently in the United States, uh, Congressman Emmer, um, the majority whip of the House, he introduced legislation that could, in fact, prevent the Federal Reserve from issuing a central bank digital ah. currency. Uh, he introduced the CBDC Anti-Surveillance State Act to halt efforts of unelected bureaucrats in Washington, D.C. from issuing a central bank digital currency that he says strips Americans of their right to financial privacy. And I'm quoting him here, any digital version of the dollar must uphold our American values of privacy, individual sovereignty, and free market competitiveness. Anything less opens the door to the development of a dangerous surveillance tool. Do you, what's sounds your response like, to that? Sounds take, great, yeah, I, I, I'm suspicious. Do you suspicious. take any comfort that this is at least being addressed by the well, House and people are pushing few, back against it? There's been very few things that have happened in Washington that have brought me comfort <laughs> in, during my lifetime. Uh, I, I have known some people somewhat ranked there and uh, I, I'd like them personally, but 
I feel like generally whatever, whenever they do something, what I would like to see is complete gridlock in Washington usually is the best scenario. I, I'm skeptical of these things that happen because typically they start out with a great name. When I used to write a newsletter for Doug Casey, we used to make fun of the laws because any law we said it does the opposite. So we like the Inflation Reduction Act. Correct. <laughs> creates inflation. The Food Safety Act makes it almost impossible to buy organic foods um, because the, the, the way the laws are. So, so when I read this, I say, number one, I doubt it'll work uh, or, or catch you know, a trend and catch people actually going for it. Uh, and, and two, I mean, why would they do that? I mean, there hasn't been anything they've done that's ever given us more freedom in the last 25 years. I, I can't think of one thing well, that has. I take, um, you know, I take Congressman Emmer at his word yeah, here. Yeah. I've met see. a lot of congressmen and, and I've not typically felt like, I felt like I can get them to be interested in my needs by contributing and rounding up perhaps things. I'm, but, I'm but, not, perhaps I'm not quite as jaded as you are yet, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I hear your point yeah. that maybe there is another purpose behind this, but I take Congressman Emmer yeah. at uh, his word. And for me, it's comforting that at least someone in Congress is flagging this and yeah. you know, saying, listen, this is gonna be a huge invasion of privacy. One of the co-sponsors of the bill, uh, Representative Hill, he says that at the very least, this needs to pass through Congress. Yeah. That it can't be an executive order, it can't be yeah. decided by the Fed. Yeah. So at the very least, we're gonna have to have Congress vote on yeah. this. Yeah, I just think people should go back and study when the Fed came into being and all the stories that were going on then. And it's easier to see patterns in the past than today because we're not emotional about the earthquake you know, in, that in 1906 and seven, the Fed coming, you know, the money, the way the money was moving and the creation of the Fed and the justification. And then a couple of years later, it was kind of like brought to the forefront and then put in sure. place in 1913. So, I mean, so, so I think it's easier to go back and study that and just to say, what are the similarities? Of course, back then there were people standing up against the idea of a central bank and reminding people of some of the troubles of the past. And, and that gets makes everybody feel comforted. And then, boom, here comes the... Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah, playing devil's yeah. advocate, yeah. 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 But you're thinking that even if Congress needs to approve this, that it's still going to happen. I, I'm suspicious. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think what you've seen is a trend towards more control, you know, yeah. a, a trend, you know, towards towards more kind of tighter, tighter grip. Uh, in every angle of this, and I, my suspicion is that that'll comfort a lot of kind of uh, Quakerish, you know, American types that are, you know, real pay the deficit down, give me the freedom, this type of person, and then that placates them, and then boom, here comes the. But I mean, we'll we'll see. I I hope the guy succeeds. Maybe they should make him president. But, I mean, <laughs> I, I I doubt it. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, from, as I said, it's now being brought to the greater yeah. public attention. Yeah. Well, maybe I should talk to the guy from my newsletter and, and you know, in, interview him for the newsletter. Congressman and, Tom Emmers from Minnesota. So I, I'll, I'll go there once it thaws out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah not a great time yeah. to go there. But OK, you're concerned about CBDCs. Again, I share that concern, just yeah. pointing out that yeah. potentially things could derail it. Well, I'm not Although that concerned I'm, because I'm, I try not to worry about things that I can't control, right. which central bank digital currencies would fall into the bucket of things that are you know that are outside of my you can't control yeah. it but you advocate for being prepared for it i i and, that's right i think you should be eyes wide open i mean if you're if you're i think you should you should try to operate in life where you're, where you're aware of what's happening and you're you're up to speed and not uh sleepwalking through life it's just my approach. and is that where gold comes into the conversation i think gold is is very complicated so what what people miss in the book is that when i talk about gold because it's it's kind of it's I, I wonder if people read the book sometimes but but the amount of gold you need is actually quite low and then i'm always shocked how people are speculating in gold they think it should go to ten thousand overnight or something but if you look back since 2000 gold has done a really good job of protecting wealth you know it's up maybe sixfold roughly and so if you were to buy uh, a house in a lot of places it's maybe up you know four to six fold i mean it's it's kind of kept pace and so gold is this ultimate kind of real tangible way to hold your wealth now one thing i want to point out which i was speaking with some guys here at the conference about this gold had a had a tough couple of weeks in february 
but it looks quite normal on the chart. You know, you're kind of looking at this, this big run that we had since November, it was like $325 or something. And gold's pulling back and it looks very normal if you pull back and look at that in the context. And I said to these guys, because one thing I'm gonna talk about in the newsletter is, why does the gold price move so violently when nobody sells their gold? You know, there's no, no Indian housewives sold their gold, no central banks sold their gold, no major you know, billionaires trucked the gold down and sold it. It's very funny to think about. And then the price goes down. So we're going to talk about that. It's too much for today. We're going to talk in the in the newsletter about this and why it happens. It's actually very, it's not a conspiracy. Well, that would, that would it's be quite it. easy to, to understand. And so when when I put that out, we can come back and, and kind of talk about that more. But, but gold is something you own and it's not something you speculate in. I mean, I think a gold royalty company is a speculation, but gold itself is not a speculation. People get that mixed up. You know, I think right. it's a great, when you have the coins, it's really great. But is, is gold, should it be viewed as some kind of protection strategy against a CBDC? Absolutely. Yeah, so make, absolutely. make that case. It's the only thing that you can hold that someone can't find. Like remember my friend, my hacker friend having sushi with me, it, why, why hide what they already know about? No one knows where this coin is. No one. And and your biggest threat is a, is someone breaking into your wherever you're keeping it and and taking it from you. So so this is the only thing we're in a society where everything we're in a digital prison basically. And this is one of the only things you can have that's going to maintain its value. Uh, it's not going to be lost to fire or whatever. And and it's totally off the grid now. Just to be clear to people, and in the book, for people that did, bought the book and didn't read it, um, the amount of asset you need, like the percentage you need, is quite small. I mean, you don't really need to have 50% of your wealth in gold. It's a bit crazy. Um, so it doesn't take a lot. A little bit goes a long way, I think. Okay, so, you know, I, I get your point. You can keep your gold safely buried away somewhere that, you know, no one will be able to take it away from you, even yeah. perhaps potentially at the threat of uh, at gunpoint. But other than that, nobody will be able to take your gold from you. But yeah. how, does, how does gold practically function in a CBDC world, well, you might how not do you be able see to them readily interacting? Use it the same way you might not be able to readily use Bitcoin in a CBDC world. Because remember, you're going to go try to do something with your Bitcoin, and you're going to have to somehow exchange off of a major government-sanctioned network, which, as we discussed in my scenario, would only be the safe network, which is the the government's network. Okay, so you can see how this becomes a trap, but but you have to have the gold, in my opinion, in a mentality where you might not be able to do something with it for some period of time. And you have to be okay with that. And that's why I think you're not gambling with gold saying, ah, oh, it's gonna go up but crazy. What, what would be the point money. of having it then if you can't use it for transactions? I'll tell right? you, because this is something I'm writing about in the newsletter, is that the thing people understand about life is that you only have to get rich one time. Okay, so when you are working, you're trying to make your life better, you need to understand that you only have to succeed at that one time. After you do that, your job is to stay rich. And so when you look back to 2000, let's say you had been worth X amount of money in 2000, and you took a portion of that and put it into gold, a small portion, that amount has maintained your hard-earned wealth. Because remember, everybody thinks it's like winning the lottery or something. It's not like that. You, you're working really hard every, I mean, you're, you're not here on vacation. You, you would love to be here on vacation, but you're working, it's really hard. And, and you- It's a nice mix well, of business and You have pleasure. a lot of, responsi <laughs> you have a lot of responsibilities. I, I mean, you point. can't sleep till 11 and have room service. I mean, you, you, know, you have things to do, people to be accountable for, right? And, and I do as well. And we're doing that. Uh, we enjoy it, of course, but we're doing that to, make our life better, make our family's life better, We're, all these things. So this is a tangible representation of all that effort. And then to, to have some of that protected, I think is very important. And what I like to do is to think of it like buckets. And so I have some gold, I have some, some of many different things because I'm not trying to outsmart the system. I'm, I accomplished number one. I'm trying to now be a good steward, a good trustee of, of. Um, yeah, I mean, look, gold as a store of value has uh, proven its worth for yeah. thousands of years. My question is, how do you see it being interacted or integrated 
in I, a CBDC I, I world? I don't think it will or, be integrated. Yeah. Well, but is yeah. it, well, I want to break that down into two points. From an individual to individual level, is there going to be like a black market where people use their gold for private transactions? I, I would never advocate breaking any federal laws, just to be clear. Uh, uh, a I do, side market I do, then? I do think in this that, scenario. that potentially you might see what has happened many times in the past, which is people having to conceal and hold and be very patient. You know, we've been through this before where there were times where people went across a border or something in history and they were able to take this small amount of gold, which allowed them to then get something like an apartment or whatever on the other side. And, and we may have to have the mentality that we're trying to preserve something. And people will say, well, why would you want to do that if you can't spend it? You might as well have it all in FedCoin and then at least you can, but we just talked about that. You might find yourself saying, out of this pile of wealth that I was able to accomplish with my hard-earned effort, I sure am glad that some small piece of it I kept away from where the system is headed, even though I'm not able to readily use this. Perhaps I got to give it to my kid and say, I don't know what you're going to do with this, but at least you have it. Right. But again, if you're not able to utilize it, I mean, perhaps you'd yeah. be able to swap gold for another asset. Uh, if Maybe for pancake coin, but I don't. I, it's, it's possible. It, it's possible. But but. But if you went back and you say you needed to sell your gold in yeah. a world of CBDCs, yeah. and then again yeah. that gets yeah, translated into. To, I think they'll have an excise tax on that. Yeah, I don't think they. And then it gets it. translated back into CBDCs. You're, you're right, back so. into the system. Yeah. So so I think you have to kind of say if this thing is headed this way, you know, how do I want to be positioned? I I, I think. I think it's important that people realize when I write about these things, I'm not giving you some, I haven't been to a meeting at the, in Washington to discuss these things. I'm just saying, it's almost saying to you, have you thought about this? Right. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the awareness. answer might be, Absolutely. yeah, the answer yeah. might be, no, I don't want to think about it. And then I say, I'm envious of you because blissful ignorance yeah. is probably the best state that you could have. And you'll probably really enjoy yourself. And you won't be thinking about look, any of this stuff. A lot of speculation because we just don't know the answers. And I get right. your point that you're right. just trying to raise awareness and connecting the dots of things that you're seeing you happening around us. why that's the case is because I've done this for so long now that I found that by doing this and having fun with it, it helps you be so ready for something else that comes up. You can spot it instantly and you realize that you got a muscle in your brain. And if you've used that muscle like a workout, it really pays dividends down the road. Let's bring back the conversation to gold's role in a CBDC world. And I say CBDC because central bank digital currencies, and while central banks are exploring a digital currency, they're also buying gold. In fact, 2022, central banks bought the most gold than they ever have. Make that connection if you see one there. Well, like I was, I was saying about the, the price coming down, none of the central banks sold, none of the billionaires sold. Uh, the mining production is down. So if this, if gold is so kind of old and useless and uh, right, oh, oh, like something, you, no, but don't worry about gold. You don't need any of that. Why are these? Why are these entities quietly? Remember, if it wasn't for the World Gold Council, we would have no idea what was happening. I mean, there's no stories in major media unless they're quoting the World Gold Council. I mean, nobody's, no journalists are investigating and going into a vault and counting the bars. So we wouldn't even know this stuff. And that's how quiet it is, right? So I think they are going to continue to, to buy because this is something to do with dollars. I mean, people need to understand the world is transitioning in a very important, there's something going on right now that's going to define the next 10 years. And you have to look back to when there were two world powers, two major world powers, then there was one world power, this is unipolar, so one world power, and now you're splitting apart into zones. And I gave a speech about this that's on YouTube, it's 2019, about there was gonna be zones, and these are zones of influence. And the US dollar is going from being the one that is in charge of everything to, to the one that's in charge of a zone. And as that happens, there are other groups that say, I, I think I'm going to hedge. I think I'm going to hedge. I mean, maybe I'm going to shift a little bit of this over into something else. And gold fits that bill. There's a lot of countries that have been forced into dollar transactions. They have a lot of gold and they're willing to trade that gold for something else that they need like gas or infrastructure, 
construction projects and all these things. And that is very much happening right now. Yeah. EB, whether it's at a metals mineral resource yeah. conference yeah. or at a Bitcoin DeFi conference, one theme that's a common denominator is this idea of de-dollarization, of the dollar being weaponized to an excessive degree of late, and of countries wanting to de-dollarize, particularly the BRICS coming up with their own potential reserve currency, which will be a central bank digital currency on the, on the blockchain, potentially backed by a basket of commodities, potentially including gold. But the de-dollarization trend is one that transcends both worlds of gold and Bitcoin. So watch, people at home should, and you can say can subscribe to my letter at ebtucker.com, I'll talk about this, but watch the countries that are going along with dollar sanctions and the countries that are politely saying maybe we will not go yeah, along. We're seeing the split. Yeah, yeah, we will. You know, the, India is a really good example of, of this. Indonesia is an example. There are several countries that are going to be non-aligned, so they're not going to go to either side. Meanwhile, China's looping with Belt Road using a bridge currency program. They're trying to get in place to go around around the Belt Road. So this is happening in real time, and it's not that once you see the picture. It's not hard to follow and see it develop. What does that mean for the price of gold then? I, I personally think this current route that we're in with, with gold probably keeps up a little bit longer. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see it at 1780, 1790, something like that, which I think is still $150 above November. People should remember that. And I think that becomes a turning point. And then you have to question, does gold know what the Fed is going to do before the Fed does it? Historically, it does. If you remember, gold started rallying before we had the, the issues uh, in September of 2019. Gold was already on the move. Typically, gold went down in February. As I wrote in the newsletter coming out Thursday, I, I see a stock correction coming in the short run. And I think gold sniffs that out before it happens. So gold will turn before things turn around. And so what I think that means for gold is when we hit that bottom, it's gonna turn very quickly and no one's gonna believe in it and it's gonna rapidly go over 2000. And that's probably something that happens in second or third quarter this year. So gold above 2000. Yeah, it's gonna catch buy. people off guard. There's nobody, you can ask the people, here. everybody's here for, for carbon offsets from my company or uh, critical metals and the gold business is a dry desert. I mean, if, if one bucket of water comes in there, it's gonna, it's gonna fly. And I've been doing this a long time. I've seen it get down to this level. And when it turns, there's nobody involved and it just goes, it flies. And I think you can wait for that turn. By the way, I, I always tell people, I think you can wait until you see that. It's actually better to wait because when you're waiting, you're not as emotional. If you're trying to get the last rock bottom yeah. penny, you're very upset about the, Duration what do you the, think a safe bottom for gold this year would be then? Well, I, 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 I do think that it has support in maybe the high 1700s, like 1780, 1790. It's going to be really, really hard. If gold goes through that, it means that something really bad is happening. Like, I mean, the, I think the stock correction is probably 15% from here. And I talk about that in this week's letter. And, and I think people should be ready for that. It's already happening in the chart. I show the chart of it. And it's very obvious. But if gold were to shoot down but below that target, it would tell me that it was going to be even worse. And I actually don't think it really is probably worse than, than that because it's a very sensitive system that we have. It's a centrally planned system. It's not capitalism. It's centrally planned. And when you have a centrally planned system, you have to give up looking at things the way we learned about in school, like in economics and you know, getting finan advanced finance degrees. You have to kind of give that up because the centrally planned system is very hard to predict Yeah, because it's centrally planned. All right, we are going to take a centrally planned break, okay. but we will be back for part two with oh, E.B. Tucker. Kitco News coverage of the 32nd Global Metals Mining and Critical Minerals is brought to you by First Majestic Silver.